Good morning, Michiganders. Yes, we are back here on Sunday at Kyrathon Mac. What does that mean? We're here in Michigan, specifically Detroit, with the most fabulous Michiganders. And we have wonderful last guest that I'm going to bring to you. But first, I want to remind you why we're we really here. We're here to raise funds and awareness. And that means there's a better approach for pain than opioids. First line approach, drug free, surgery free, and you can make that difference. You can help us educate, celebrate, and really inspire the entire state of Michigan to have a better life, drug free. Now before we get started, you know what you need to do. We have an amazing guest with us. Look at your wallet and ask yourself, can I inspire someone else? Can I give back? Like we just had Dr. Simonetti around the world giving back to orphans and bringing that chiropractic message real. How do you donate? Very simple, f4cp.org slash Mac. And to our top donors, we have this fabulous back-friendly backpack. For the top donors, you will get one of these. This was actually designed by a Michigan chiropractor and it takes care of your back the proper way. So listen, this is our moment to raise the money we need to make that happen. We set a lofty goal and you've been with us all weekend. What is that goal? $50,000. Where are we right now? $14,711. Very exciting. Thank you. We need a little bit more. Friends, family, if you know someone who needs a little more education on men's health, bring them right now because this is the person that you want to hear more about. Before we get started, you know we have to give grace and grace is given to our corporate sponsors. Today's vignette is sponsored by Stop Pain Clinical and Stop Pain Clinical Migraine and Headache. They have an innovative formula with 10% methanol. It penetrates and elevates the pain away from the body. It is one of the immediate pain relievers that you can have. It helps with migraines and headaches. This clinical product, unfortunately, is not available over the counter. In fact, you can't get it at traditional retail sites. So where do you go to get this clinical strength helpful drug-free approach well i will tell you this you can go to a healthcare professional near you and how do you find them well let me tell you how you find one if you're sitting out there right now and you do not have a chiropractor you can go to the michigan association of chiropractors and you will see on their top leader head find a doctor now if you have friends or family who are not in michigan but you want them to have a chiropractor no worries we've got you f4cp.org slash find a doctor. This, my friends, is how we celebrate, elevate, and educate our communities in Michigan. So I wanna now play a short video from Stop Pain Clinical to get you to understand who our corporate sponsors are. So once again, Stop Pain Clinical, we thank you for supporting this fabulous vignette for men's health. And who do we have here for men's health but a true leader in the area of men's health? This is Dr. Eric DiMartino. He is with us, a leader, a graduate from Palmer College, someone who has been in the forefront of giving lectures all over the country and lectures based on all sorts of lifestyle issues from stress to men's health to unfortunately our opioid epidemic and that is scourging our communities. So we're here today to really help people who are suffering. Dr. Eric, you have been part of your Anchor Bay Chamber of Commerce. So I know that you're, you're very involved in your community. You love your community and you're very involved with helping men find better health. So I'm very excited because one of the things we know, Dr. Eric, is men sometimes put their health on the back burner and they need a little bit of like just prodding. So men, if you're out there right now, 
this is the person that you want to talk to you about men's health. So we're going to jump right in to make sure they can hear about why men's health is so important. Because, you know, in November, the Foundation for Chiropractic Progress focuses on men's health for this right. very reason, top priority. So in your office, what are some of the greatest health concerns that you see when it comes to your male patients? Yeah, so there's a lot. Um, probably the biggest that we're seeing nowadays would be things more in the chronic disease realm, things like heart disease, uh, cancer, diabetes, obesity, prostate, uh, a big one. And, and what we're finding is a lot of this stuff is, it's really just lifestyle related things, right? A, a lot of people think that, you know, these chronic diseases are, are more of a genetic based thing, right? It's like, well, it's my genes, you know, if my parents had it, then I'm gonna have it, it's just unfortunate. But what all the research shows is the vast majority of these things are, are lifestyle related. Which, which is good news, because that means that we can actually affect that, right? We're not, we're not um, uh, victims of our genetics. And so um, what we teach people is that's all about lifestyle. You have to really focus on the important things of what you need to do so that uh, as a result, you uh, are gonna live a healthy life. Um, you know, the genetic thing is really important because I think what we see with a lot of people is that um, they go through life thinking that whatever their parents suffered with, they're gonna suffer with the same thing, right? right? And, and what we teach them, and, and they, you know, when I tell people it's not really genetic, it's 90% lifestyle, they're like, well, doc, how come diseases run in families? Right, because we see it all the time. They say it must be genetic, but we find it's not really genetic, it is the true lifestyle. Because if you think about it, where did you learn how to leave your lifestyle from? Mm -hmm. Your parents, right? If your parents put a huge emphasis on eating right and exercising and managing your stress and not drinking excess and not using tobacco, then most likely you would do the same thing. However, if your parents didn't think it was important to eat healthy, didn't think it was really important to sleep right or manage your stress or avoid you know toxic foods then we typically would do the same thing and as a result we would end up with the same type of diseases and so it's amazing they've done a lot of uh, adoption studies where they studied uh, kids that were adopted into uh, their adoptive families and they followed them throughout their lifetime and obviously their adoptive parents have no genetic similarity they're their adoptive parents but what they find is they will develop the same diseases as their adoptive parents not their biological parents so that shows that it's obviously more lifestyle. And to me, that's great news because that means we're actually in control of our genes. Or, I'm sorry, in control of our, our, our life outcomes. Because I think what happens a lot of times is because we see that our family members have these types of disease, we think we're going to get them. So it's like, well, if I'm just going to get cancer, why even bother eating right? Or why bother exercising? Or why bother doing these things? I'm just going to get the same disease as my parents anyway. We become disempowered. And I think that really feeds into the pharmaceutical industry and big pharma because it's like, well, if I can't really change my outcomes, I'm just gonna live unhealthy because it's more fun and then I end up developing these diseases and I have to become dependent on those medications, interventions that, uh, that are, we think are necessary, but many times you can be proactive and avoid those things by simply taking care of yourself. Proactive mm -hmm. is the key. So mm -hmm. two very big words that you use that I think mm -hmm. are fundamentally gonna change some of the men out there that are gonna help them be better at what mm -hmm. they do and that is you have control, mm -hmm. all right? You did say the word prostate. Don't be mm -hmm. discouraged or dismayed or like, I don't want to talk about my prostate on a Sunday morning, but listen, men need to have these options to mm -hmm. talk about their health and not feel embarrassed or not feel like, well, it's something wrong, but I don't want to talk about it. Well, you can't hide it under the bed. You, mm -hmm. you can't pretend things are okay. So we're having these open conversations about lifestyle change. Mm -hmm. And I'm really glad that you brought up, it's 90% choice. Mm -hmm gentlemen out there mm -hmm. if you choose health you will get health for the majority of what you do sure. so having you say that now they need to know well, what choices doctor do i need to make to ensure i'm creating a lifestyle that is not mm -hmm. predisposing me to problems yeah. well i think guys have to realize that your body is essentially a machine right and like any machine the more you maintain it and maintenance it the, the longer it's going to last and the longer it's going to perform properly and it's funny because we speak with guys and like you'd said earlier, many guys, we just don't take our health seriously. And I think, I don't know if it's a, a macho thing or I don't, I don't know exactly what it is, but I think that's the main reason that women live longer than men is because they take their health much more seriously. I know I've seen in my office that, you know, 90% of the, the healthcare decisions in a family are made by the, the mother, right? Made by the, 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 the female. Um, and many times we'll see the, the mother will come in first and then she'll bring her kids in and eventually she'll drag <laughs> her husband in, right? Like, like he does not want to be there. And we'll talk to him and he'd come in and he'd be limping, he can hardly walk. And it's like, 
what's wrong with your leg? And he goes, it's fine. My other one works just fine. I only need one leg, right? And that's, the guys are just these minimizers. And I really think that's why we, uh, we just don't live as long as women. As a result, we're just not as great when it comes to that. But one thing I tell guys to kind of get through to them is they get machines, right? Guys are usually machine people. They get cars. You know, if you have a car, would you, you know, typically every 5,000 miles we're supposed to do an oil change, right? Now, would you forego that and just keep going? Because if you think about it, when you do an oil change, why are you doing that? Is there something wrong with the car? It's running perfectly fine. Right. There is no symptoms. It's doing what it's supposed to. But we realize that if we're not proactive and do that preventative maintenance, eventually our car will break down. But we don't take the same approach with our health, right? Guys especially is like, ah, I don't have the time. I'm busy. You know, I have other things going on. But by not taking care of their health now, it's like, it's like avoiding the oil change. And then a year down the road, your car seizes up. And so instead of a $50 oil change, you now have a $10,000 engine repair that could have been completely avoided. And we see that with many men. It takes a crisis for them to actually make a change and do something about it. We don't want that to happen. Because most guys think that, you know, if there's a symptom, I can kind of live with it for a while. Right, guys, again, it's that macho thing, I think. And what we find is that, especially in our offices, is that guys don't come in when the symptom starts. They come in when the symptom has gotten so bad, they can't function anymore, right? They can't do what they have to do. They can't be who they need to be. And, you know, for patients out there, guys, you probably know this, you go to a doctor and I see it all the time and I'll ask them, so when did this symptom start? And they'll be like, oh, like two years ago. It's like two years. Why'd you wait two years? I could live with it. But now I can't work. I can't sleep. I can't play golf. I can't, whatever that is, that that's their identity, that they basically have an identity crisis at that point. They can't be who they want to be and do what they need to do because their, their health is not letting them function properly. Very important. Gentlemen, it's the only car you're ever <laughs> going to get. Mm -hmm. So if it's a Maserati, a Ferrari, I don't know, a Lamborghini, a Tesla, I don't Whatever. care what car you have, mm -hmm. but do take care of it. He said it right there. Don't let the engine seize up. Don't let the tires go mm -hmm. flat. Don't let the lubrication stop. Because when you think about the chronic diseases mm -hmm. that are impacting men's health, mm -hmm cardiovascular, yeah. we know what to do there. Obesity, we know what to do there. Mm -hmm. Diabetes, we know what to do there. Prostate health, how do I protect my prostate? So let's talk about mm -hmm. some things that they can do functionally yeah. that will really kind of propel them to the next step and maybe just kind of wake up this morning on a Sunday morning going, oh, my wife made me watch this segment with Dr. Yeah. Eric, I don't know why. Tell them why. Yeah, so, I mean, the prostate is just another organ in the body. It's nothing different than any other organ, um, but it probably doesn't get as much attention as it should. But the good thing about health is that all these chronic diseases we were mentioning, right, the cardiovascular, cancer, prostate issues, they're all driven by the same thing. It's poor lifestyle. It's, it's chronic inflammation in your body as a result of not living a healthy lifestyle. And so some of the, comp so the nice thing is if you just do the healthy lifestyle, you fix everything, right? It's not like I have to do this for this body part and this for this body part. Everything, it's, it's all under the same umbrella. And so when we talk with our men, it's exercise. Really, really important that we exercise effectively. Um, ideally, you want to do a mix of some cardiovascular, some light exercise like walking. Strength training is really important. We've realized that we need to maintain our muscle mass, especially as we get older. That's one of the biggest predictors of, of longevity is how much muscle mass we maintain into our senior years. So exercise is vitally important. I don't, I don't think people need to be told that they understand that. Diet, really, really important. Um, especially guys, not always so great with diet. We have to understand that, that our body can, it, it's amazingly resilient and we can run on lots of different fuels. Like again, guys get, get engines. Like you could, if you have an unleaded fuel running engine, you could put diesel fuel in it and it'll run for a while, a while and then eventually it's gonna break down because it's the wrong fuel for that engine. Humans are the same way. We can run on junk food and unhealthy foods for a while, but eventually our body's gonna run down because we're not designed to eat that and eventually it runs down in the form of chronic diseases. So if we can fix our diet and find clean ways of eating, we can avoid a lot of these things, even reverse a lot of these chronic disease illness processes. Take a baby step for them right now, just a very small baby step yeah. in changing something that They've been running on diesel for a while. Yeah. Okay. Some really hate vegetables. <laughs> they, yeah. they, that, I mean, I've met many men, especially in some of the lifestyle changes that we, we try to promote that mm -hmm. just say, I just hate vegetables. So, so talk to them about, it's easy to say lifestyle changes in nutrition. Mm -hmm. Give them a small step. And so the biggest thing is, is, is try to eat real food, right? I, I, I'm not going to talk about avoiding carbs or avoiding fat or any of that stuff, just eat real food, right? Just try to get some of the toxic man-made stuff that has a gazillion different ingredients on it out of your body. Because that's not food, it's, it's, it's man-made lab creations. It's not really food. Mm -hmm. So just try to get real, real food in your diet and then taking out some of those really refined sugars, the really you know, hyper 
processed sugars to try to get out of your diet. But Perfect. if you're a carb person, you're like, I just can't give it up. Rice is great. Potatoes are great, but they're real food. So try to just eat real food, and then from there you can take more additional steps. Beautiful. Baby step. You heard it right yeah. here. Just a baby step because mm -hmm. you're right. These small steps add up. Absolutely. And that's how you get to the summit of a mountain mm -hmm. is you start taking the steps that are necessary. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to exercise because mm -hmm. you said something really important, which is the measure of your longevity is based on how much muscle mass you have. And mm -hmm. we know that it can be balanced. You know, mm -hmm. are you catching yourself when you're 60? Yep. Easy to do when you're 30, but you mm -hmm. get a little unstable on a stairwell mm -hmm. when you're 65 and you don't have any muscle mass, it's a problem. Sure. And we lose muscle mass really quickly as we get older. Yep. So let's talk about strength training because mm -hmm. there's a lot of social media and I get a lot of questions often about, you know, do I, do I need to take anabolic steroids <laughs> to, I mean, you know what sure. men do to like, wow, this commercial makes me look buff. I mean, they, mm -hmm. they give you that impact of like, I want to look buff, but mm -hmm. honestly, when you come down to it, health is not about how buffed you are. Yes, you look good, but talk to them about muscle strengthening and then some of the things that they should really start thinking about if they do go to the gym and they really want to do bodybuilding. Yeah, well, the first thing is if, if you're not skilled in that is to hire somebody or find somebody to help you because the last thing we want you to do is doing it improperly and then hurting yourself as a result because a lot of times people get you know, they're energized, I'm gonna go work out, they get all motivated, they go in there, they hurt themselves or they're so sore they can't function, like, I'm not doing that again, right? So make sure you get some advice, whether it's from a person or even online, to how to do it properly. Start off slowly so your body can adapt to it and then stick with it consistently. Muscle mass, because a lot of times people think, I don't wanna, especially as we get older, I don't wanna do strength training because I might hurt myself. But you just have to do it intelligently. Do lower weights, higher repetitions, so you're not putting a huge stress in your joints, but your body will still build muscle in response. And it's interesting, there's a recent study that showed you know one of the biggest things as seniors that we as we get older we fear is that we are uh, going to lose our, our cognitive you know, faculties right the, you know, dementia Alzheimer's it's really scary what they found is one of the biggest predictors of, of developing Alzheimer's and dementia is your leg strength if you don't have leg muscle mass you're much more likely to develop this they don't exactly know why yet but it's very consistent and so keeping your muscle mass will help with cognitive function as you get older so we need to take this it's not just about what we look like in the mirror or we're not doing this to lose weight or to be a competitive athlete it's your health you have to have that that physical ability and muscle is really really important in that well said you know it is is it interesting that you brought the leg health up because mm -hmm. Research matters yep. and getting the right information at the right time and having experts like you come on and be someone that can be trusted, mm -hmm. not someone who's trying to brand or sell you something. Yep. And the one other piece is the British Medical Journal, Sports Medical Journal came out, started talking about exercise and mental health. Mm -hmm. And we know that there's a scourge of the opioid epidemic and it's across this state in Michigan and across the United States. And it's, unfortunately, it's not, it's not getting better at mm -hmm. this moment. Well, we can say that the prescriptions are down, we're still losing a lot of lives. In fact, it's the, it's the greatest loss of life we've ever seen in the United States history. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, what the NIH and the CDC have noted is there is an affinity for men to be impacted more from substance use disorders. Mm -hmm. So I want to I want to grab from you now, why would that be and how can we talk to our men about when we know something's wrong, how can we move that forward? Yeah, so what's interesting is if you actually look at the research, women actually get twice as many uh, opioid prescriptions as men do, but men die at a two to three times higher rate from overdose. And what they believe it's due to is that women tend to be a little more responsible, I guess, in their usage of the opioids, whereas men are more likely to take too much or maybe for too long a period of time. That's why we see those statistics. But the biggest thing they have to understand is that while opioids may help in an emergency situation, they don't actually fix the underlying cause of your health problem, right? They just, they just simply don't. A lot of times talking with patients, they think that their symptom is their problem. Right, they're like, doc, my problem is my back pain or my headache or my sinus problem or whatever it is. I tell them, that's not your problem. Your problem is what's causing your headache, what's causing your back pain, what's causing your XYZ symptom. That's the problem. So we have to get to the root cause of the problem. Opioids simply just don't do that. Um, the example I always like to use with my patients is, you know, if there's a fire, a fire alarm goes off. Right? And that fire alarm is the messenger, the symptom of the fire to let you know that there's a problem. So while people don't love symptoms because they, they, they're not fun to have, it's actually really intelligent 
thing that your body's doing. It's letting you know that there's a problem. It's a fire alarm going off, letting you know that there's a fire. So we understand that if there's a fire, we don't just turn the fire alarm off and go back to bed, right? We call the fire department or we get out of the house. But with our body, we don't take the same approach because we think that the fire alarm is the problem. We just shut that off with the medication, go back to bed, and then our body burns down from the inside. And so we have to understand that while symptoms are miserable, they're actually really beneficial. We don't want to just cover them up with an opioid or any medication for that fact. And as chiropractors, that's what we really pride ourselves on is addressing what is the underlying cause of this health problem, right? We don't treat the symptoms. We figure out what is your challenge, and we uh, assess your spine and nervous system to make sure it's functioning properly. Most people don't know this, but your nervous system is your master system. It controls every single part of your body. And your nervous system is your brain, your spinal cord, and your nerves. Now what's cool about the spine is it's the, its whole job is to surround and protect your nervous system. So the health of our spine is paramount for us to have a healthy nervous system and ultimately a healthy body, right? But there's just not fo enough focus on spinal hygiene or spinal health in, in our country. And it drives me crazy because it's only the most important nervous or, uh, system in our body. So as chiropractors, we focus on that. Only the most important system in our body and only the most important important message we can get out today mm -hmm. through the Chirathon Mac is for you to consider how we can educate and motivate our American mm -hmm. population to do better, have better. You can do that by f4cp.org slash Mac. If you mm -hmm. donate today, we will ensure that there's a first line approach. We will be supporting the Drug Free Pain Management Awareness Month. And we're coming back to the substance use disorders because in America right now, we've had a pandemic, which has been extraordinarily isolating. We've had an opioid epidemic, and now, unfortunately, we have a mental health crisis. And as we know, oftentimes it's much more difficult for men to talk about their feelings. When they go into a chiropractor's office, they have a substance use disorder. How does chiropractic fit into that? Because we're trying to help you with your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Are you saying the substance abuse disorder? Well, we try to well, hope they admit to us that they have it, because a lot of times they will not. We try to get to the, 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 the root of it, but we try to create a safe space with our new patients where they feel like they can talk to us, that they can open up about whatever challenges that they're having and hope that we can address it. But I think we indirectly just educate them on the concept that any medication doesn't address the cause of the problem. It may numb the, or mask a symptom or maybe alter your physiology to make a number look better on a test, but ultimately doesn't address the underlying cause, whatever that is, whether it's poor lifestyle, it's poor spinal health, whatever that is, that needs to be addressed. And so we make sure that if they have are having substance abuse challenge, we make sure we get them to the right professional to help them with that. Um, but a lot of times what we find is if we can simply help them function and feel better through chiropractic, they don't have to deal with all those tips or medications because they don't need them anymore because they're actually healthy. Right. And we saw that in the Medicare as too is when first line approach was drug free. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, if they had a prescription, 50 to 60% of the time, they didn't fill it. Mm -hmm. And that, that really, when you think about how do you prevent a problem from happening in the first place, mm -hmm. you don't give the problem to them, right? Exactly. Because 30% of the people that first take an opioid, mm -hmm. we call them opioid naive, yep. will end up being addicted mm -hmm. on that very first pill. Yes. That's frightening. When you think about some of the research that just came out for our 17 to 25 year olds, great news. Harris Poll, breaking news for you. Press release released on Thursday is the biggest users of chiropractic now are the younger people. Sure. And I think that is beautiful. Yeah. The other piece of this is we need more men to utilize chiropractic because as you started, Dr. Eric, a lot of times it's the women that are bringing their family to mm -hmm. chiropractic care. Mm -hmm. And that's a big portion of it as well. I believe as we move forward and we start to have a better understanding for mm -hmm. our men's health and better awareness, mm -hmm. that creates that next step of being able to say, you know, instead of it being two years that I've had this problem, I've had it for two days, Dr. Mm -hmm. Eric. Yep. Now we know men's health is very important on a scale of the top global diseases. Mm -hmm and we talked about those. Yep. But what would you say right now, when you're in your clinic, the most important piece of men's health and things that they need to know today on this Sunday to change their lives? I think the biggest thing they have to know, I mean, we can talk all about the different strategies like we've already discussed, but the biggest thing that them to realize is you get one body. That's it, you get one body. And if you wanna live in this life and leave a legacy like many men do, you actually have to be around to do that. And so you have to have this vessel that we're in be taken care of so it can last throughout your life to actually accomplish that. You know, we see a lot of people nowadays that are living into their 80s. You know, a lot of men living in their 80s, but 
there's some men in their 80s on the golf course and hanging out with their friends, and there's some men in their 80s that are in a hospital bed with tubes sticking out of them, right? They, men have to ask right now, which one do you want to be? Which 80-year-old do you want to be? Do you want to be the one that's out with your friends playing golf, doing whatever sport you love, or do you want to be that guy who's in the hospital bed, dependent on their family to help them because they didn't take care of their body starting earlier? I'll tell you, Sherry, one of the, the number one things I hear from seniors, especially men in my, in my office, is that I wish I would have done something sooner. I wish I would have known about chiropractic sooner or I would have just taken action with my health sooner because many times when we get older, the damage is so significant that it can't be undone. It's just too late. And so we always want to be very proactive and I'm so happy to hear that the young people are the most common ones coming in now because now they're going to be, they're going to learn that message. They're going to be proactive and they can prevent themselves from being those, you know, suffering broken down seniors that we see too often. So he said it on a Sunday morning, it's real, it's important and it's critical. Do listen to the men that come in in their 70s. And if I only knew what Dr. Eric just said on this Sunday morning in Chirothon 23 at Michigan, is that if I'd only known about chiropractic, then I would have done better. Well, you can do better right now. I don't care what age you are, five years old, 25 years old, 50, 75, or 100. You know, Jack LaLanne was one of the best and most epic individuals in the 40s, talking about real health. Yep. I mean, into his 80s, he was still very buff, mm -hmm. and he was a chiropractor. Yep. And I think one of the pieces that we need to do is look back and see who do we want to be like? And mm -hmm. you said it best. I want to be the person on the golf course having fun with my friends in my 80s and my 90s. Mm -hmm. And you know, we don't know now with the artificial intelligence, how much further can we live, right? Who knows? The sky's <laughs> and the limit. So, it is phenomenal that you came to share your wisdom, your knowledge. You're brave, you're bold, you're beautiful. You've done what needs to be done, which is educating the population about chiropractic and the benefits that can happen when you choose chiropractic. Listen, we're wrapping up with this fabulous guest, Dr. Eric, talking about men's health. But at the end of the day, it is about everyone's health. And so I want you to meet me back here to talk about how did Chirothon 23 in Michigan, how did we end up? Because we have a few more minutes to get those donations in. And if you know Dr. Eric, Dr. Eric is putting his time, his talent into today. So please help donate to this fundamental cause, educating, elevating, and inspiring our nation to do better and have better. So meet us back here in just a few more moments and we will tally the results. And I wanna thank you, Dr. Eric, for joining me on a Sunday morning. Thank you for having me, appreciate it. My pleasure.
Welcome back to the very final segment of Chirothon 23 at MAC. We're in Detroit, Michigan, and the Michiganders have been extraordinarily generous. How generous? Well, you're just going to have to wait for just a moment because I'm going to announce how we did this and where we did our match. We remember we were trying to make $50,000. First, we want to thank all of our incredible staff behind the camera, Kevin and Don and Al and all the great people behind that make this restreaming so possible. So thank you, Cairo Secure, for being there with us and doing the hard work. Second, the staff members for MAC in the Foundation for Chiropractic Progress, you're pretty darn amazing, I have to say and our corporate sponsors. This could not be done without our corporate sponsors, so we want to thank them as well. But one of the big pieces now is knowing that your dollars are matched, dollar for dollar, and that really means something. Our Chirothon had one mission, elevate the understanding of chiropractic care. This is September Drug-Free Pain Management Month. We talked to Dr. Eric just recently about how opioids have scourged our communities and that there is a better approach to your health. How? Through lifestyle changes. And chiropractic care is one of those. It's drug-free, it's surgery-free, and it's so important to get engaged with your chiropractor adjustment because that's what it is all about. Now, I mentioned the word adjustment. Well, we have a phenomenal opportunity for you to continue to learn more, especially during Drug-Free Pain Management Awareness Month. And we do that by introducing you to Adjusted Reality. It's a podcast series trusted by the adjusted, and it brings in celebrities, thought leaders, a number of individuals who are really truly gifted in what they want to talk about. One of them during Drug-Free Pain Management Awareness Month is Sam Kionis. He is an award-winning journalist. He's written two books. You need to hear his podcast on adjusted reality. Sam talks about the very beginning of where the Sackler family was less than honest with the public and how we ended up where we are today. His first book is called Dreamland. His second book is called The Least of Us. Both are wonderful reads. And as a parent or a grandparent or someone who needs to know more about drug-free pain management, those two books will get you there. There are other people on that Adjust Reality podcast like a chief addiction specialist, Anna Lebke. Dr. Anna Lebke is from Stanford. She wrote a book called Drug Dealer MD, a phenomenal individual. And she wanted to tell the truth about how we're polypharmacying our communities and how we need to think about our health is our own responsibility. Health does not come from a pill bottle, and you know that out there. Those that are suffering, find a better approach. Help move the needle to get a lifestyle that you deserve, a drug-free, surgical-free lifestyle. And the other piece of that that Anna Lebke moved forward with is her second book, which is called Dopamine Nation. We're living in an addictive society and the pandemic did not help us in our social isolation, so we went more to social media. Let's bring it back in, ladies and gentlemen, doctors of chiropractic, patients of chiropractic. Let's start to get out there, walk with our friends, get more involved in our community, volunteering. It's what's from the heart that really matters. And you gave this entire weekend and you gave and you showed up and that's what makes the true difference. Now, another piece of this is Katie's Cause. That's the Adjusted Reality podcast that's coming out on Wednesday. Katie's mom wanted to talk about how over-the-counter medications can be problematic. One of them, acetaminophen. She lost her daughter due to acetaminophen use, and she wants the world to know that there are better options and that having these conversations are so critical with our youth and as we start getting into our older years is that we want to reflect on why we're taking a pill and have conversations with the pharmacist and your primary medical physician. Is this necessary? Should I be taking this? Do these two medications go together? This is the time to reflect on you. Chirothon is about elevating the education. Now, as I promised before, I want to make sure after thanking our sponsors, after thanking everyone that was involved this weekend that you know what the total is. Listen, I do not take this as a setback. We came out at $31,022. But wait, remember, we're gonna keep these vignettes up. 
You can share them with your friends and family. You can find a chiropractor if you don't have one, f4cp.org slash find a doctor, or go to the Michigan Association of Chiropractors and go to their link if you're in Michigan and find a chiropractor there. So we'll keep these vignettes up all during the month of September, our Drug-Free Pain Management Awareness Month, so we can get that 31,000 to hit that 50,000. Yes, we can do it. And yes, Chirothon was a massive success because we have streamed over 13 different sites and you showed up and we are forever grateful for that. So keep the money rolling in. Your money will be matched dollar for dollar. At the end of September, we will make that $50,000 mark. I wanna thank you again. We have phenomenal opportunities to do our giveaways to all the people that donated, and we will contact you to get those backpacks to you or those Detroit Lion tickets. So again, appreciate you for joining us this Sunday, and we look forward to the end of September when we can say we made our goal happen because of you. Thank you so much.